Are you searching for the best in online black radio? Then go to blacktalkradionetwork.com, helping you filter through the noise. Real talk, black talk. The internet is full of half-truths and all-out lies. We've all seen them, and many people on social media complaining about it. Here's your chance to show and prove. WorldAfropedia.com is a black-owned and operated encyclopedia. There are several thousand articles, but we need help. We can't uncover all the truth ourselves. So please, join us and become a writer, editor, or blogger for WorldAfropedia.com today. Every little bit counts. We owe it to the future generations to put the truth out there. Visit WorldAfropedia.com, the African-centered encyclopedia, a global database of African knowledge for the purpose of bringing about global African wisdom and understanding. WorldAfropedia.com The first ever black president will be followed by a president who's endorsed by the KKK. Bob, where does that leave you? Could you pick some other? I can't imagine anybody more marginal to American elections than uh, the KKK. I mean, every four years, the KKK comes up because people like Hillary Clinton want to bring the KKK up. So it doesn't but shock I want to you. It horrify you. They're I'm, holding they're, a rally no, in December no, to no, celebrate yeah, his but, victory. Yeah, and so are probably the Knights of Columbus. Now, why don't you talk about the Knights of Columbus? Maybe you don't even know what the Knights of Columbus are. Another extremist group? It's, it's the largest Catholic organization of ma- uh, Catholic males in the country. Uh, let me just point out to you, it's inappropriate to talk about the KKK in the same sentence as Donald Trump or any Republican. He's a, uh, they're un- utterly marginal. They wouldn't even exist if it weren't for every four years you trot them out. Jim Manda. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me hear what you have to say about that. You know, I find, it, I find it really interesting. It seems to be a refusal to accept reality. So she's asked a question about the KKK, and it hasn't been engaged with, and instead we're being told that there's this other group called the Knights of St. Whoever. The point is the KKK exists. The KKK endorsed Donald Trump. The KKK stands for white supremacy, and that has to be acknowledged. That has to be pushed back on. Is there nothing on the campaign trail that he said about race that hit you? Did you worry about any of it? No. In fact, you people keep magnifying it. Uh, The left in America and the left in in Great Britain keeps magnifying it. But he talked about a lot of other things. And th- those things should get and through. And that is too. possible. I mean, this if, is if you have a fifth of, La- of Latinos or Hispanics voting for Trump all the same, maybe race wasn't an issue. Even well, you know, to the I find that argument of. to be very troubling. The idea somehow that if, if Hispanic or even pe- any people of color vote for somebody who's racist, it means he's not racist. I mean, every system of oppression has people who are in the group of the oppressed who somehow contribute to that oppression. So it doesn't even, it's, it's not even a valid argument to make that because Hispanics voted for him, therefore. I, I think what we should do is look at Trump for who Trump has told us and shown us that he is. So let's look at what he said on the campaign trail. That's, that's really what, because the only way we can judge the kind of president he will be is based on the campaign that he ran. But maybe he didn't believe anything that he said, and maybe that's but, how but, you win a But, but then that's the primary. problem, because on the one hand, we're told that Trump's appeal is that he says what he thinks, and he says it like it is, and that sort of thing. Well, but isn't and then on the other hand, we're told that somehow he doesn't really mean it. So which is it? There's something very troubling about that. No, I'd say something entirely Paul different. Ryan have accepted that Trump has been racist in his language. You don't. That's not true. He hasn't been racist. Textbook I mean, racism let, is the let phrase Let me tell you, because of the you know, going to say this is if because you're a white the... man, you don't get to define what racism is. Oh, I see. I don't you get really to don't. define it. I've, uh, so a man who's been racist, you don't, no, you don't get to sit there and say that he hasn't been racist when objectively he has. Do you know and what... it's not about your opinion. The objective things. Racism is an objective reality, and Donald Trump has inhabited that reality. Do you know the false consciousness, which is the theory you're talking about, is a Marxist con- concept? You know, I mean, the, and I have, you, in you other words, I can't even re- open my mouth here because I'm a white male. Yeah, of course. I'm just saying uh-huh. to you that Donald Trump has shown us and has said things that are objectively racist. No, he so has it's not. It's not about my emotion. 
But how what does he, he say? If he says to us, for example, that a judge, a United States judge, is unable to judge him fairly because he is Mexican, that is racist. I would well, I'm, I'm racist. Sure. We're nearly at the I, end I of our... Judge Cur- Curiel, and he didn't look any other color than my color. Well, that's not the yeah. point. Well, it's it is. What, it's about what your candidate I, said. I'm going to move this on just for a final thought, which is, will Donald Trump govern in the same way that he campaigned? No. Is, and that's he's a good thing gonna, or a bad thing? It's a proper thing. He showed you how he's going to govern starting uh, the other night when he was dignified, uh, charming, and uh, very focused. I think it's very sad. It's, the, 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 I think the, the, the standards have been so lowered for Donald Trump that mm-hmm. because he manages yeah. not to behave like a spoiled child, he needs to be praised. I mean, it seems to be, in some ways, it's a very, this is kind of a crude analogy, but it's kind of like... You know, throwing a little tantrum and letting a little child drive a very sophisticated car. And so to say to us that we have to disregard everything that Donald Trump said and did during his long campaign and judge him just on the one day after he had won the election doesn't make sense. What did he say that that was so racist? Bob Terrell, thank you very much indeed. We'll we'll talk about this later. We'd love to. Thank you. Context of white supremacy, Gusty Renegade and for another broadcast hopefully to share constructive information on the system of white supremacy. Today's date, Sunday, November 20th, 2016. So I have been told this is our monthly global Sunday talk on racism. Always look forward to hearing our international listeners' thoughts, commentary uh, on the global system of racism, white supremacy. If you would like to participate, take advantage. The number to dial 641-715-3640. The code is 564-943-POUND. Press star 6 if you would like to participate. Number again, 641-715-3640. The code is 564-943-POUND. Press star 6 if you would like to participate. Remember, this program is only 90 minutes. This is not our normal normal broadcast, just 90 minutes. Uh, Give uh, our international listeners an opportunity to share their thoughts. If you have questions and things, feel free. But don't lollygag because we will not be here uh, for our normal lengthy broadcast. The audio segment that you heard at the beginning of the program, uh, that was from uh, the BBC uh, Newsnight. Uh, This was a big kerfuffle. Uh, towards the end of last week when they were giving their coverage of the U.S. presidential election. Uh, That is Nigerian author uh, Chimamanda Adichie. uh, Adichie. Uh, She has several different novels uh, that talk about, in my view, racism, white supremacy, global perspective, very popular uh, author worldwide, uh, and the suspected race soldier R. Emmett Tyrell. And they had their uh, exchange last week uh, that was talked about, still being talked about uh, quite a bit. Um, Before... We get to our international uh, callers. Uh, Any of our folks that are in Canada, if you're here, if you're with us, that is certainly outside the States. So you should dial in, uh, participate, get a hand up if you have commentary that you would like to share. I'll keep an eye on the switchboard. I'm going to kind of go through uh, some of our participants from different spots around the globe, get their thoughts, and then I will incorporate uh, our listeners who have questions or commentary. You just want to join the dialogue. I will add you all once we hear from our international listeners. So let's see. With us, we should have uh, Mary. She's been with us several times before on the Global Sunday Talk. Mary, are you with us? I am, yes. Grand. Always great to hear from you. Uh, let see. We should have uh, June. She was with us when we did the program last time around. Uh, are you with us, ma'am? thought she was there not hearing you. Are can you, you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Can oh, you hear okay. me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you loud and clear. Great. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. For sure. For sure. Uh, we should have uh, Mr. Fox been with us for a while now. Are you there, sir? Correct. Um, can you hear me? Crystal clear. Uh, let's see. And Andrew, you're with us, sir? Yeah. Um, hi, Gus. Hi, everybody. Greetings. Good to be here. Greetings. Glad to have you with us, sir. I think we might have one more. Yep. 
I thought I missed one. And last but not least, uh, we should also have uh, Lorraine with us. I think she... We'll see if she's hopping on the line now. Um, I guess if it takes a little bit longer for her to, to hop on, we'll just add as we go. Um, sounds like, yeah, she's still not with us. Just... Oh! Do we have you? Lorraine, are you with us? Yes, I am. Yes. Outstanding. Lots of folks might be one of the more fuller calls. Lots of participation. Uh, So big news story. um, The election of Donald J. Trump uh, last week here in the U.S. Uh, We certainly have been talking about the U.S. election uh, with you all uh, for about the past year or so, getting your thoughts. Uh, I was very excited. I'm sure a lot of our listeners were as well uh, to hear your thoughts on what happened. I think a lot of you all did suspect that Trump was going to win, but just your thoughts, what you've seen in the past 10 days or so since the election and specifically how white people, at least in your observation, white people that you've heard or talked to, what you've seen, how white people in your part of the world have responded to President-elect Trump. Uh, Let's see. Let's start. We'll start with Mary. Hi. Um, I think some of them still think it's kind of like a joke, but there's also been quite a bit of indifference to it. Um, But I think, I suspect that's because they're all taking cues from Brexit. So it's come from here and now the states have done it and now Marine Le Pen's going to do it and then the rest will follow. So I think they're taking cues from it, but they're not really talking a lot from the people that I've encountered. I haven't really read anything in the news. I've seen a few cup, a couple of news um, headlines, but that's the usual thing. They over-report it, such and so forth. But speaking with people at work, it's one day, and they were saying, yeah, I can't believe that he's president, and then it just died down after that. Hmm. When you say uh, taking a cue from Bre- Maureen Le Pen is the white female, I think she is widely by many people uh, suspect, even many white people uh, accuse or suspect her of being a racist. They say she's like part of the far right in France and they're suspecting that she might have a good chance of becoming president in the upcoming uh, uh, French uh, presidential election. When you say that uh, whites in England are taking a clue from Brexit, what do you mean exactly? No, I mean whites globally are taking a cue from Brexit. So it started with Brexit, now it's gone to America, Now, France has taken a cue because they've seen that two other nations have done it and then the rest will fall like dominoes. That's what I mean. Okay, just to make sure I'm So does that like, uh, I guess, a more a more explicit form of racism? Is that how you're interpreting these events where we're just being more flagrant about centering racism, whether it's Brexit, saying there are too many non-white people or the election of Trump, possible election of Marine Le Pen? Is that what you're saying or something else? I'm saying that they're saying they're thinking to themselves now it's okay it's all right now like we've taken cues from Britain from the USA now we can all join together because we all have one common cause globally so we can all get our ducks in a row I mean the way that Trump's cabinet has been reported in the news is that it's a hard line cabinet when it's just blatantly a, a white supremacist cabinet that he's gathering together but they're coding it by saying hardline just to make it soft and just so that they all know because you know that their language techniques are different to us. So they're letting each other know, okay, we're, we're all getting in lockstep one after the other and then all the European nations will follow and then we'll really be able to mm-hmm. lock down the system of racism forevermore. That's what I take from it. Got it, got it. Right wing white nationalist, conservative, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lorraine, uh, your thoughts, same question. Your your thoughts, uh, observations since the election and how white people around you have been talking about uh, President-elect Trump. I don't really have too much um, interactions with white people. However, I have noted that on the radio, um, just as he um, was picked... They were interviewing um, white people, they even interviewed a couple of Americans that live here. And they were all saying that they feel embarrassed. They think it's a joke. They think it's disgusting. But I don't believe a word of it. I've, um, I've heard a few people say that people are, white people are more vocal um, with their racist talk. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they're quite happy with it. Um, 
the thing that stands out the most for me can you hear that noise is, is um that's my whatsapp beeping did you hear it a couple times <laughs> i'm really sorry about that i don't know how to switch it off um yeah the thing that stood out the most for me is this prison thing and it seems as though you know um last year britain was saying that they wanted to build a prison in jamaica using foreign aid and um they're going to be sending people back to jamaica um who sentences are longer than four years um by t- the year 2020 um america's talking about well trump is talking about building a wall it's like a prison in effect really um you know keeping the Mex- the mexicans in sort of like a wall prison um where's the other one there's an oh, another one another connection with the word prison i can't even think at the moment my brain's just gone dead at the moment but it just seems as though this prison thing they're all jumping on it and it's going to be a big factor you know here in britain they were saying that the prisons are overcrowded there's not enough workers you know there was unrest last week in the prisons and how the need to get another like 1200 12,000 sorry um prison officers and you know that's the thing that stood out the most for me it's like Trump's opened his mouth and there's been this big um, resurge of prison talk. Yeah, that's what stood out the most for me. That is interesting. Wow. Uh, let's see. June, same question. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I think it's, I mean... Yeah, it's 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 really difficult. It's really really difficult. I mean, for me, I um I've noticed that there's been almost like a low level anxiety with um black people in particular. I think over here, um around you know how is it really going to impact us? And even though we've had you know we've had the Brexit thing, and that was quite stressful for a lot of black people because they um you know the the, the amount of stuff that we were was getting reported. Um, the racist incidents would, went up after Brexit. And so obviously with Trump being so bold about his views and stuff like that, I think it's, you know, people are, yeah, I think people's anxiety levels are going to rise because they don't, you know, if, how is that going to impact us? Because, you know, it's like like the, um, is it Lorraine? I can't remember who was saying it before, but about, you know, they're all kind of leading one after the other. Um, mm. And everybody, yeah, they're just sort of taking the lead from each other. And so, what does that really mean for us? It's like we're being cornered now. You know, they're all taking over their, taking over their respective areas, and um, you know, it's leaving us a lot more vulnerable. So it's 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 a very it's, it's been quite a stressful time, you know. But my thing, what I've been trying to do personally, I've been trying to encourage other people to do, you know, is to really, you know, up their own self-care to up their own how they actually deal with with their own racial stress because we can't you know in in many ways we can't control you know we can't make donald trump change his mind we can't make him think differently or any other white supremacist but we do have the control to um deal with how we respond to it and if we're if we're healthier in an in a in emotional way in a psychological way we're going to be able to do the work that we need to do because then we're feeling vulnerable or if we're really scared or we're fearful about all of this, which is understandable. If we have systems in place and processes in place to deal with that kind of stress, then it's going to, make, it's going to be easier for us to actually think strategically about what we need to do to fight racism because we can't fight it if, we, if we're vulnerable. And it is, it is a hard thing to manage, but I've, I've been trying to encourage people to think about it in those terms because sitting there worrying about what Donald Trump's doing is not going to help us. What's going to help us is taking care of ourselves so we can take mm-hmm. care of each other. That's, 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 you know, my take on it, but it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it is, it is hard. It is really, really hard. And um, in terms of, you know, white people's reactions, they've been quite quiet in, you know, in, in my circle, I've not really, I've not really had any of those conversations. I had one. I had one conversation with a lady recently, a black lady, who was saying that she's got two white lodgers in her house, and basically both of those people they, they're Trump supporters. So her stress level in her house has gone up, 
quite a lot, even though she hasn't, you know, she won't engage in conversation with him, but they live in their house and they're both, they're both Trump supporters. So she, yeah, I mean, you know, we're having to manage this, this thing. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard for people, you know, so it's just about, yeah, taking it a day at a time and obviously being aware of what's going on, but trying to focus more on, you know, taking care of ourselves. That's, that's, that's kind of my take on it. Because white supremacists are going to do what they're going to do, you know. So, yeah. Terrorize black people, absolutely. Yeah. We will make sure you plug your project uh, promoting black self care before uh, we exit the broadcast today. Uh, let's see, Andrew, your thoughts, same question. Your response, what your observations have been from whites in the UK since Donald Trump's election? Um, Gus, is there too much background noise? Um, because um, is there too much? Or can I? Can I? Is that okay? If I, with a level of background noise that you can hear. Uh, I think as long as you're talking, it should be fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Excellent. Yeah. Um. It's been. It's been. I. For me, it's been really interesting because. Um. You know. With well, first and foremost, well, I start here. Um. Going back to work because you know as a teacher. I've had uh, two two white girls in my form group, and these are 17 year olds. So these are you know girls in you know doing their AS year. That's the first year of what what we call A level. Um, I think you guys might call it. Um, uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the year two years before they go to university anyway. So these two white girls said to me, "Sir, what do you think of Donald Trump getting elected?" Right. <laughs> so I said. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm not really going to be having that kind of conversation here with you guys. Right? <laughs> so that's the first thing I said. And then they said, well, what, why, sir? This is a school. You know, this is the kind of conversation we should be having. Hmm. Uh, are you still? still? And I said, what do you think about it? And then they said, um, well, you know, you know, this guy's a racist, you know, they've elected a racist, right? So, so first things first, you know, I mean, that, what, what struck me there is that these girls, hello, 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 oh, we hello, can hear you. We can hear you. hello, 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 I'm not sure if I got lost there. We can hear you. Um, if you can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good, right, okay, so um, I don't know where... I, yeah, sorry, I don't know where you where I got up to in that, but uh, but anyway, these two white girls in my form group, right? Um, they're about uh, um, you know they're, they're about seventeen years old, as I said. Um, they, they, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, okay, so so they um you know they asked me what my opinion on Donald Trump, and I said, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not prepared to give that opinion. And they said, well, it's a school, and then they offered their opinion. They said, one, he's a racist and he's a bigot, and added a few more things to it as well. But anyway, anyway what, struck, what struck me about that is that these young white children, they know what a racist looks like, what a racist is, right? That's the first thing that struck me about that. And then they offered up a, bit, a little bit more about it as well. Um, and then, so anyway, around the school, I've heard a lot of six formers, a lot of 17, 18 year olds, having amongst themselves, having specific conversations about what Donald Trump actually is. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. If somebody... Okay. I just want to make sure if you have your line open and you're not speaking, if you could use your mute button just to make sure we're not having any echo or anything, If you, particularly if you have speaker, if you use a speaker on your Skype or what have you, just to make sure. Go ahead, Andrew. We yeah. can hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, you know, so, so, oh, you know, so, so they're having... So these are um, not, probably not young children, but the older children, the, you know, the le- kids in their late teens are having conversations as to what and who Donald Trump is. Some of them taking the mickey out of Donald Trump or say or, or that kind of thing. And others just having conversations. And, and, and I've been thinking for a little while now, especially since the whole thing about, you know, white people in America and here. Right. In terms of Brexit, about the whole thing about white people saying they're going to do one thing but in the voting booth doing another thing, right? In other words, a load of quiet racists, racists that, if you like, are in the closet, so to speak, right? It, it seems to me that white supremacy is morphing or it's trying to morph. What I mean by that is that it seems that a lot of white people are in the closet racists. In other words, they're consciously, politically, vote-wise, 
going in certain directions. In other words, you know, they may or may not be doing it um, in the workplace and or in all, all these other places. They may or may not be doing it verbally, but what they are, where they are doing it, is in the is in the ballot box in terms of who they're voting for, right? And they're doing it very specifically. So I would expect them to now do that in France and to do that all. Well, they are doing it all over Europe, right? So, so, so it seems to me that the game for white people has moved to doing things politically in terms of who they're voting in, right? Um, that's I find that really, really interesting, right? And I think we have to have some serious conversations about that because obviously, you know, they voted in this, this, this racist in your country, in America. He's going to have a foreign policy to match his racist views, right? So in terms of what he does on the world stage and his, his, his outlook on Africa, where we come from, right, at the end of the day, right, that's the thing to watch, right? Um, you know, so, um, so, 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 so all of that is what's to come. Secret closet racists having a, a political voting agenda, and they know full well about the power dynamic in voting your man in. In your case, in America, you've got a racist in power, he's got racists who's positioning the racists around him, and all of the racists that put him in, the white people in your country, in America, they know what's going on on that level. And they're totally, in other words, you know, in other words, they're quite happy to live next to black people, talk to black people, and 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 palliaf. What I mean by palliaf, I mean by chat with black people and all the rest of it. But they know what they're doing in the voting booth, they, and and they're leaving it to that millionaire, billionaire man to do their bidding for them on a on on a national and a global level, right? And that's that is the new, you know, you know that's the new. Um, uh, 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 that's how it's morphed. Yeah, yeah, are you with me? You know, that's the morph. You know, that's where it's moved to, right? And we need, I think we need to understand that and what, what's, and, what and what the ramification is on, on, a, on a global level for it, for the place where we come from. Because I tell you what, I don't think Africans in Africa understand Donald Trump. And they, and they don't, I don't think they know what's coming. Might you know? be, might be black people in the States who uh, are not... Uh, clear about what we can expect over the next four years of uh, the Trump administration. I did want to say also, just briefly, at least in the States, uh, there's data, like irrefutable data, that most whites have said, no, we have no interest in living around Negros either, and they don't. <laughs> but that is another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is another conversation um, for Scythe County, Georgia. Mr. Fox, uh, wrapping it up, did you have comments, the election, observations? Well, regarding the... Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, no surprise whatsoever. Racism, white supremacy is just under um, new management. Um, I don't see any much difference if you had Hillary winning. I'm kind of glad Donald did win because um, people, especially well, especially black people in the US, they seem to look at racism as being something which their their grandparents might have dealt with but the little reoccurrences now before a lot of the police um shootings which we've been seeing recently have just been little isolated incidents so um i'm glad that he did get elected and it actually does show what white people are thinking and how they are willing to organize themselves as a whole collective in the US when it comes to how racism should be practiced. A lot of them, well, as we've always seen, white people always argue amongst themselves on how racism, white supremacy should be practiced. They've done it during World War II, during the Civil War. It's what they do. Some people want to be more extreme with the practice. Some people like to be more covert. The people who want to be more covert are people who would have voted for Hillary Clinton, the people who want to go back to the 1960s and 50s are the people who vote for Donald Trump. Um, regarding the white people over here, white people in the UK like to do a lot of finger pointing to the US as that is the hotbed of racism. And racism 
how it's practiced and the US can learn a couple of things about, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Diversity from, yeah, diversity from people, white people in the UK. So white people have been looking at it as, oh, they always look at Americans as stupid. So the fact that white people have voted in Donald Trump, it's just like a, another tick in the box, like to say, well, look at these Americans, look what they're doing. They're voting for a racist. Well, not surprised, but over in the UK, they don't like their racism so overt like that. Theirs is, um, it has to be under the radar. And if anything does come out, it's always there while well, these people are ignorant and uh, the next generation, you know, everyone's sleeping with each other. You know, white, white, white people and black people have friends. So, you know, the people who don't want that uh, are the ignorant ones. So they like to do a lot of finger pointing to the US regarding that. But it's just, it's no surprise whatsoever. I would like to hear your previous guest you had, Kevin MacDonald. What, if you can get him back on the show to find out how he feels about Donald Trump being elected. But um, regarding um, Donald Trump, it's this, um, to me, it's this, um, you know, white supremacy is this under new management. And I can see what a lot of, I've seen a lot of reports regarding prison stock. That's been going up, so they know what's going to happen there. A lot of new prisons being built, you know, for you know who going in there. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to be planned out. I did see that. I put, uh, posted one of those reports on my Facebook page about the, the prison stock rising significantly after the uh, election of uh, Donald J. Trump. Um, interestingly, since I think everybody here is in England, uh, our guest this coming Thursday, so-called Thanksgiving here in the U.S., Paul Defiomi Grant will be joining us Thursday. For you all in the U.K., it'll be Thursday evening, but for folks in the States, it'll be like this time. Uh, this coming Thursday, Paul Defiomi Grant, he'll be back on the cows. Uh, we'll get his thoughts on the election. He's done writing about that and some of the other issues uh, concerning racism in his part of the world, but that'll be uh, this coming uh, Thursday. Tune in Thursday afternoon for the folks in the UK, Thursday evening, same about this time, uh, this coming Thursday. Are right, anybody on the line with us familiar? Paul Defiomi Grant, you all know who he is? Yeah, I like him. Right on. Yeah. Sorry, I think he's right on point with a lot of things that he says, especially when he was discussing discussing one time on your show about um, there only being a few couple of generations left of black people on this island. You know, I think that he yeah, he's quite on point. Andrew, you were going to comment as well. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard him speak once or twice. Yes, I, I agree with um, what... what uh, so, um, I didn't catch your name, sis. What did you say your name was? Lorraine. So, uh, yeah, I agree with what Lorraine just said. I've heard him speak a couple of times. He's on point. Yeah. I don't want to go back in the archives, any of our listeners. Uh, he was with us... Um, he's been with us several times, but specifically, he was with us in 2011 to discuss the uh, rioting uh, in London that went down after Mark Duggan was shot and killed. We talked about that this past summer as well. Um, before I get to some of our callers, I know in the States, one of the big talking points post-election has been uh, misogyny, patriarchy, sexism. Donald Trump made all of these sexist comments, and now he's been elected, and white women moping, saying, you know, Hillary Clinton was a victim of sexism and that's why she lost the election. Uh, the point that I, you know, emphasize and that I think should dominate all of this is that the majority of white women voted for Donald Trump. Like, I don't want to hear any moping or crying from them about anything uh, because they put their racial interest above everything. But has that been something that's been discussed over in the UK in terms of sexism, patriarchy, or, you know, somehow this election represents another you know, slight of uh, patriarchy, white male patriarchy? Um, they've kind of tried to put that forward in the news that, uh, you know, it's a man versus woman type of thing. But let's face it, they're all on the same team. They all want the same thing. White women blow a lot of smoke up their own rears about, you know, 
their gripes with their own men but that's exactly what it is it's their gripes with their own men and they want to be in control and their men want to be in control but at the end of the day they all fall in line lockstep because they all have one common purpose and that's to maintain the system of white supremacy and um, remember Gus a, a couple of months back I said that he would win and he won I just wanted to say that because I knew that this was coming. It was it was inevitable. You could tell from the numbers in February, from the the college votes. You could tell it was going to happen. So it was just a matter of time. So, yeah, they they've tried to make it about feminism and women's rights and all that, but they're all full of junk. They're all full of crap. White women advance feminism so that they can get their numbers up, so that they can quarrel with their men, and then as before. You know, black people, especially black women, end up with egg on their face and looking like a, looking like fools. I mean, I had a friend, self-proclaimed black, black feminist, and I had to point out to her that she doesn't even know the history of feminism. We we no longer talk because she got into you know into a real tizzy about it, but we no longer talk because she didn't even know about Margaret Sanger. A lot of people don't even know that. That's one of Hillary Clinton's idols, Margaret Sanger. Um, she didn't even know about Gloria Steinem and all of the kind of all of the things that happened as to why black men are no longer ple- present in um, households across America and even over here is because of feminism and because of the breakdown of the patriarchal system in our society because white women want to argue with their men. Mary did uh, get her prediction in on the program. I've said that anyone that's been listening to the cows, you should not have been totally stunned about the election. I think we had numerous guests, Dr. Welsing, Mary, folks from around the world who came in and laid out, in my opinion, very solid logic as to why this was likely to happen. Uh, other folks uh, in, in the U.K. in terms of where you all are? Have you uh, been hearing people, particularly whites, try to make this about patriarchy and saying that this is just another example of sexism? Yes. Um, I mean, I've heard all kinds of stuff. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Oh, yes, sir. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I've heard all kinds of stuff. So all of that, you know, that it's about uh, patriarchy, you know, all, all of that. But... Uh, but you know, I've I've also heard um, a lot of figures, a, a lot of on the radio. I've heard it also said that why have white American women come out and voted for this man? I, I've you know you know I've definitely heard that. What was interesting? Uh, there's a woman over here called Vanessa Phelps that does a radio show in the morning, uh, Drive Time. Um, she had some feminist woman on from some organization I can't remember what organization it was it was this white woman who's a who's a self-confessed feminist was very honest and she actually said that um, white women in America put their color above their gender and so, so this is a white English woman saying you know for one second she was in she was you know more or less honest and she said, "White American women put their color above their above their gender by by by, um, by voting this man in, right?" And, and it was a weird um, uh, a moment of almost honesty coming out the mouth of, uh, of of someone on the radio. I found that really interesting, and the, and you know, but that was but but then you know the conversation sort of wafted onto something else. But for the most part, it's been a whole load of conversation as to God, what's happened? You know, what, 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 you know, you know, you know, apparent total amazement and confusion about why this man was voted in, basically. So, 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 so you know, almost, you know, almost, uh, basically, white people practicing something called double think. Double think is something from that book, 1984. You know, you know, you know, whereby you know you you convince yourself that what's true isn't true, so that you can carry on. You know, down some strange path. That's what double think is. You know, so that's what you know. This, this is what you know. This is what's been on the radio. That's what's you know. That's what I've been listening to. But I just want to say also that, um, in a way, in a way, I'm kind of. This is going to sound weird. I'm glad that this racist has won, because um, a lot of black people here have been having straight up conversations as to what racism is. You know. And, and so that's been interesting listening in and being part of those conversations with 
a lot of black people that wouldn't otherwise talk about racism, you know, you know, and what and white supremacy actually. So, so that's been amazing. Do, doing that and being part of that has been has been good. And I know I don't believe if Hillary won, I don't believe they'll say I would have been involved in those conversations unless I actually instigated those conversations. So that's been that's been joyous to hear. Well, I'm going to see if I can uh, track down this discussion where the, whoever it was that gave a moment of truth about uh, white women putting their racial interests first, which they yeah. all... This was, you I said mean, this was drive time on... Was that, that was dri- drive time. BBC Radio says so in the morning. Okay. Um, in fact, you look for it, Gus, but I, I, I've saved it as well, right, um, on my TuneIn app thing. Um, so, um, so it's drive time. I th- I'm sure it was this week, either early this week or late last week. I'm sure it was early. Th- I'm sure it was this week, early this week. Um, and it was drive, definitely drive time in the morning. A woman called Vanessa F- Phelps. Um, I don't know how you spell this. There's only one Vanessa on, on, on BBC Radio London. Um, so so it, it's not difficult to track down. Um, she was interviewed on that radio, I'm sure for at least for about you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, um, so, so it's not, it can't be difficult to, to locate. Grand, I will uh, track it down. I did want to make sure I got in really quick as well. The point that you made the first time when you were kind of giving your post-election thoughts uh, about white people lying and saying that they're going to do one thing, you know, Trump is deplorable, he's a racist, he's not qualified, he doesn't have the right temperament, blah, blah, blah. And then they go and vote for him anyway. I don't, that should not be minimized in terms of deception because white, they did the same thing with Brexit as you brought up because people were saying the same thing. Oh, there's no way that they're going to leave the European Union. It's not going to happen. And then they did. Uh, just the deception. Uh, and and I, in my view, I think it's logical to take the same approach. I don't know if they've had the protest. Why would they? they I'm sure they haven't had the protest. I don't know how, how much attention has focused on the protesting that has happened here in the U.S. But I would encourage particularly black people here in the States do not be fooled about these whites running around in the streets right now. Uh, there is a history of that uh, where you will have some whites who will, you know, whine and cry and roll around and say, this is terrible, not in my name, you're not my president. Do not be fooled by that at all. Uh, even if these folks really are not in support of Donald Trump, that certainly does not mean that they are racist. But I've just seen where a lot of times we can be very confused. It just takes one or two white people to come run around and we will think, oh, man, they're not racist and they're upset about this, too. This is a good white person. Not at all. Uh, anybody else have commentary they wanted to get in about the, the patriotism, I mean, the patriarchy, sexism uh, aspect, if that's been touched? Folks satisfied? Nothing more to add on that? Have you all heard any commentary in your respective uh, part of the world? Have you heard any commentary about white people there thinking that Trump being elected will perhaps destabilize uh, the system of white supremacy. When I say that, um, I'm reminded of like Mr. Fuller. He was saying that a lot of whites, the problem that they had with Adolf Hitler was that he would disrupt, that they had the system stabilized. They kind of had things the way that they wanted it. And he disrupted things. Uh, and it allowed for non-white people to kind of organize and push back against the system um, to upset the authority that whites had over the planet a little bit. Um, do you think... Or have you heard white people saying, not necessarily in those terms, that this could destabilize white supremacy, but kind of using different terms, saying something to the effect of could Donald Trump's election, could that uh, sour relations between the U.S. and Europe? Have you all heard uh, people talking about how this is going to impact relations between these uh, different quote unquote nations? Can you hear me, Gus? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, if no one else uh, hasn't got a view on this, um, what, 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 what I've heard, I've heard, personally, I've heard, a, I've heard a little bit of everything. So I've heard some people say that, well, you know, this man, he's got a good relationship with Russia, Putin, that's really what we need to have, you know, maybe, maybe that's the right way to go. I've heard that. I've also heard, um, I've also heard, um, well, you know, this man, 
you know, he's he's um he's got that business, you know, he's, you know, he's he's gonna. I've I've not really heard anything to to say that he's gonna make things worse, for, you know, for 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 uh, for white people worldwide. I, I've I personally haven't heard that. All I've heard is that he's gonna have a good relationship with the Russian bloke. Um, I, I mean, that's really and, and you know, I've heard, and I've heard people here say. Well, you know, he's 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 a bit rough around the edges, you know, but you know, let's give him a try. You know, we've got to work with him. He's 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 spoken about having a relationship with England. You know, let's work let's work with him. But then, in the very same conversation, I've also heard, well, he called everybody first, and and after he called everyone, then he called Theresa May. You know, so 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 maybe. You know, you know, maybe it's it's a bit of a mixed bag, but no, I I think it's veering more towards when he's in, we have to work with him. Let's just get on and work with him. You know, um, let's work with the guy. I, I've not heard anyone's. I've not heard any verbology around. Um, he's going to make it worse for white people. He's going to he's going to somehow bring all the blacks together I, 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 or, or the non-white people together. I, I've I've I, I, I've not heard that. I've heard. Oh, he's he's a he's a horrible verbose um, sexist. I've heard that, but you, you know, you know. To be honest, from you, you know, I've heard more people saying, "Well, he's in. We've got to work with him. He, he's not. He's, he's he, he might be a sexist, but hey, you know, he's in power now. Let's just get on and let's just do the job with this guy." You know, I've, I've heard that. That's basically what I've heard. Hmm. Anybody else? I've, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Gus. Um, I've heard the same as Andrew in terms of um, political leaders' opinions of him, but from people who are in the States, particularly black people, um, for a lot of them it's kind of their wake-up call and they're speaking more about exercising their Second Amendment rights and um, getting training and setting up militias and um, basically coming out of the system, getting their children out of the schools because of, you know, the very millisecond that this guy won the election, you know, the children who apparently are not born racist were displaying pretty racist and violent behaviour towards people who are non-whites. Um, but the the sentiment on the grassroots and street level in America that I've heard from black people is that they're going to get their guns in check and in order so that if, you know, if anyone brings an argument to their door, then there will be no no longer any argument and especially where um groups like alt right and uh, the kkk are, are involved but from a political point of view it's more like oh well well we get we have to eat this now and we have to work with him which i think is suspect in itself they knew it was going to happen and they're perfectly fine with it because they all have the same agenda Other folks, uh, well, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What I've learned is that I'm even more confused than I thought I was, to be honest. Um, I thought that trade would be more um, important than them taking sort of risks like that. I thought that, you know, like, because they, world trade is, is what makes capitalism work. So, therefore, if they're going to be sort of like having somebody that's the body the head that's that's supposed to represent the whole of that continent and they're say and he's saying things against say Muslims for example that there could possibly be an issue where trade may be affected. Then I heard on the radio how somebody, I can't remember who it was, it one of the Arab whatever, high up, sent a congratulations to um, Trump for winning. I just thought to myself, you know something? I'm not going to try and guess what these European are, are like at all. Do you know what I mean? I'm properly confused by them. So that's me done with trying to guess. Hmm. Refreshing. <laughs> I think a lot of us are a little bit more confused than we would like to admit. It does make you uh, have to use your brain computer and do a lot of studying to try to figure things out. Uh, and the deception as well, because they lie so much. Um, other folks? in Anyone else want to comment how uh, Trump, the election of Trump, might impact uh, relations between the U.S. and Europe? Yeah, hi, Stuart. I just wanted to um, 
to comment on a there was an article that I read today um since President Obama's been in um Europe and apparently he's been sort of they've been calling him sort of like the therapist because there's been, you know, people asking him, you know, questions about Trump and all this kind of stuff and he's almost like trying to convince people to to do it as well. And I find that a bit I find that a bit strange that he's that he's doing that. And I'm confused about that. Um yeah, it's almost like he's trying to. It's almost like he's he's do, he's doing the work of white supremacy. Like, why is he trying to reassure people about hit about Donald Trump when Donald Trump is clearly, you know, clearly a white supremacist and, and clearly totally inappropriate for that job? It doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but again, you know. Black bodies have always been used at different levels to maintain um, white supremacy at different levels, and and um, yeah, it's it's just yeah. I, I think like it's like you said as well about the deception and everything as well. It's it's they're all, they're going to do what they're going to do, and you know I suppose he's just trying to be maybe he's just trying to do the respectful thing, quote, I put that in quotation marks, in sort of handing over the baton to something that he's got no control over because he has no power. Um, but, yeah, it is, it is um, confusing. Um, it's confusing in one, in one aspect because it's this, the shock that it has actually happened. But at the same time, you know, at an intellectual level, it makes complete sense because white supremacy is just going to keep trying to refine itself and he's just another, he's just the next person in charge. So it makes sense. It makes sense that he's the next person. And he's not um, going to do anything other than maintain it. That's his job. And, you know, yeah, that's that's just, that's my comment. I just thought that article was quite interesting. Um, so there is some anxiety, I think, in Europe about him being president. And um, I just thought it was really interesting that, that, you know, President Obama's been the one going around sort of trying to, calm people down and um you know so that he will do his best and all this kind of stuff so yeah that's that's yeah that's kind of just a comment i wanted to make about that Hmm. my quick thought uh with in terms of president obama quote unquote calming whites i think number one that just as you stated i think consistently in the system of white supremacy uh, black people, non-white people are, are exploited in a variety of ways to yeah. uh, comfort and console whites, uh, which is even laughable in this situation because whites overwhelmingly supported Donald Trump. So why would they need consoling for someone that they wanted, uh, that they, that they zealously uh, supported even white women, the majority of them? So that's kind of that's just another part of the the sadistic way that the system operates where white people are always the ones that are victims, even though they're the perpetrators and they're the (laughs) ones that have to be catered to uh, as though they're just having such a difficult time uh, moving through the world, that sort of uh, insanity. And I think just uh, with president Obama, he's a victim of racism, exactly as you stated, he's a victim of racism and, and that power dynamic of him having to come out and console whites or, uh, him having to come out and as you stated acknowledge that i am not the most powerful person even though i am president of the u.s i still have to answer to white supremacy in a variety of ways and i think we or at least i have seen that for the past eight years now yeah yeah we have uh anyone else quick comment or I was going to get to some of the folks who dialed in to see if they had questions or if they wanted to just join the discussion. Anybody else uh, observation you wanted to share? Uh, or if you had something else that you just wanted to make sure you shared with listeners, even not related to uh, President-elect Trump or the election? Sorry, can I just say something about... Um, do you remember the picture which they had of Donald Trump and um, President Trump um, in the White House shaking hands? Does everyone remember that picture? Picture of the year, absolutely. Yeah. See, on the left of Donald Trump, did you find it kind of sickening that they had a sculpture of um, Dr. Martin Luther King there, knowing that that very same regime was found guilty of killing him, assassinating him, but yet they had a sculpture on the left side where Donald Trump was. Did anyone else notice that? Um, yeah, but did you notice that the picture on uh, above the mantelpiece as well? Yes, and yeah. to the right, Abraham Lincoln. 
folks can uh, check. I'll repost it. Uh, oh, wait a minute. The image that I have, it doesn't. you can't see all the different images that they're talking about in the background. I have to go get a different image so that you can see all the everything that's in the background uh, of the image. I also think the look on President Obama's face, I guess it depends if you see the video or which picture, but the image where they're shaking hands, the look on President Obama's face, a thousand words, as they say. Um, just What I just said, rewind uh, about President Obama, uh, he has to acknowledge that he is not the most powerful person in the system of white supremacy, and he has to answer to racist man and racist woman in a variety of ways. There you go. Other comments on the photo? Anything else folks want to get in before we get some of our callers? Can I just quickly mention that, uh, or can I ask a question? Why do you think Donald Trump looks completely nonplussed and just completely uninvigorated by the fact that he's won this. He just looks like he doesn't even want it. Gus, that was for you. Sorry. Oh, I was, I'm pondering. I am pondering. <laughs> um, okay. Did he, I don't, did you see the 60 Minutes uh, interview that he did last week? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. I was going to ask if you thought he looked kind of uh, despondent or nonplussed uh, or unenthusiastic about it. Um, I, th- I definitely think like there's a substantial difference between being out on the campaign, right? The whole theatrics of that. And then after you've won, you don't have to do that anymore. Certainly your conduct is going to be a little different. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I also think just the circus, I said before, I just acknowledge, that's a great question. I have to think about it and even pay attention to see if everybody, if that's their assessment of his conduct, we'll bring in some of our callers also. But I also think Mr. Fuller, he said years ago, this is back when Mitt Romney was running for president. He might be the next secretary of state. Mr. Fuller said that for many whites around the world, the White House has been permanently sullied. You've had this nigger there for almost a decade, he and his nigger family, and it's not even worthy of a white person coming behind him. He said the whole office has been devalued. The place needs to be uh, de-liced, defumigated, maybe just tear down and build a new White House. And I said perhaps, you know, putting Donald Trump in is just like the whole, you know, it's worthless. Just put anybody, you know, can be president now. It doesn't even mean anything. So we put in Donald Trump and it's it's. Just the whole not this is not even serious anymore. I'm not qualified to do this. I'm a racist white supremacist and that's about it. But I'm here now. So (laughs) I've got to ride it out for the next four years type of attitude. I have to pay attention that that's not my assessment. I'm just kind of following the logic for what I have seen. I have to pay attention to it more and I have to kind of pay attention to see if other people if that's their view if Donald Trump looks kind of unenthusiastic nonplussed uh, about all of this now that he's won. I have to have to think more about that i agree with that um especially the um the nearly fully um part because i did hear it i hear the segment being played um yeah i absolutely agree with that and i think it's um he's just happy he's just i think he's just tired because he knew he was going to win himself because i think i heard on one of the broadcasts someone saying regarding a, a letter which was sent to donald trump by is it by president nixon or was it Johnson? Which one was it? I think it was Nixon. Nixon saying that um, if he ever would run for presidency, that like, he would actually win. And I just found that very, very interesting. But um, I think he knew that he would win himself. So he's just, um, he's just happy that it's all over. Okay, thanks, guys. Sure, we'll see what some of our callers think. If any of our... Uh, folks who dialed in, if you have comment or questions, commentary you'd like to add to the discussion, the number 641-715-3640. The code is 564-943-POUND. Press star 6 if you would like to participate. Uh, let's see, we have uh, Thomas in New York, Roz, both of you are with us. Did you all have... Uh, questions, commentary you would like to uh, add to the discussion? Um, can I be heard? Yes, sir. 
All right. Thank you, Gus. Um, greetings to you and to all of the other callers and listeners and those from the UK and other parts of the world. It's great to be able to participate in today's program. Um, yes, I actually brought up the, the um, letter that he received from Richard Nixon. Um, and that letter goes back to 1986. So you're talking literally 30 years ago to the year. Um, and even though I already know that these people are chosen a long time before they get into office, to me, that was a big sign of him being chosen a long time ago and just maybe being groomed behind closed doors and in secret for this very moment that he's about to um, partake in as far as becoming the president select, I would say. Um, I had a couple of questions for our UK callers. I wanted to ask the first one is, do any of you believe that America sets a precedent for how the global white supremacist system functions because it's considered the so-called most powerful country in the world? And of course, the, I would say one of the most uh, white supremacist countries in the world. But I was going to ask first if um, any of you feel that America does set the precedent for how global white supremacy functions in other countries. I believe it does because America is very vocal. They don't hide anything. In fact, they take video footages of it and have it sent around the place. So I believe that it really does set the precedent. There are policies in England that um, stop people from acting the way that they're able to get away with in America. Um, and I do believe that in time that people will adhere to those policies, things will change and England will probably end up just the same as America in that regard. I can see uh, thank it coming. You. Any, anyone else want to answer that? Yeah, I think that um, America is global HQ for the whole system of white supremacy and everyone who's in other white nations takes cues from them. So, yeah, I mean, they say that, especially, I can only speak for this country, if America catches a cold, the UK gets a flu, the, the trend just continues and you know, like comes out like tentacles from America. I'm um, I'm not too sure. Um, I think now after World War Two, because um, regarding the West and the Western white supremacist power, um, the US won World War Two for the West. But um, how? I think people sleep on the UK a lot. I think the UK still has a lot of power and influence around the world. And um, basically, you know, this race thing, this racism, white supremacy really started with the British anyway, regarding with the racial classifications. And then the US just took it on and they ran with it in one direction. The British ran with it in another direction. They've bought heads along the way, but still they're in it together. But regarding the power and influence... Um, I think they're both on the same page, but it's all about how they want the racism to be practiced because we never had the segregation in the UK. All that was practiced in the colonial areas all over the world. But when it actually came to actually getting the people from the colonies brought over to England, they had that kind of, um, that overt racist period but you know now they're trying to paint this kind of um we've gone through this period and now it's you know all thumbs up we're in it all together and look at the us they're the ones who you know carry on a certain way but they're in it they're all in it together but i don't know how much influence the us actually has regarding how things are supposed to be run i it always flips with me i'm not <laughs> i just think people sleep on the the uk a lot the UK is still, um, when it comes to refinement, I think the most refined racist you'll ever find in the planet. Hello? Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go, no. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a power sharing exercise. Um, so uh, at some points, America would take the lead. At other points, 
America would fight with Russia to, uh, and, and Russia might go and do some leading down in some countries, down in, you know, down somewhere. And then they may argue with America, white people, let's be clear. They may argue with the whites in a place called America now and again. And then they may befriend. And it looks like now Trump is, is going to, is going to be friends with Putin. So there's going to be no arguing there potentially. And then the whites of Europe, are gonna are, so, so basically it's a great big massive power sharing exercise I, i'm i'm not sure if, if i would never say that america takes the lead and in, in white supreme no I, I think white people but everywhere cooperate and you know sometimes they may have um a one approach which might be the softly apparent softly softly approach of a of a white woman like hillary clinton or or some white person you know, some white do-gooder, right? A apparent do-gooder, and and when things are and when black people are, you know, threatening to basically get some self-determination, then they might sh then they might might shove in some some so, some more hardline racist. And I believe with Donald Trump, um, I believe the cost of doing racism has gone up. Um, you know, there's less wars in places like Africa. There's less there's less black non-white wars amongst non-white people and so therefore there's more stability elsewhere in the non-white world and so they need donald trump to go and basically stir things up you know you know they, they need a more uh, you know someone who's going to be a bit go a bit berserk you know uh, and uh, someone basically is going to he's going to put the fear he's going to put fear into non-white people Right. You know, that that's his that's part of his function to make non-white, basically to terrorize um, non-white people, to make, to put us back into line because he's going to he, he might do something crazy against us. He, he might do something crazy against us, against non-white people. Um, and that's his function amongst white people worldwide to, to reassure white people worldwide that, that that as the leader of worldwide white supremacy, he's going to basically do a good job. In my opinion, that's his function. And hopefully, non-white people are not going to be afraid, you know, that, that we're going to say, all right, let's take it to his logical conclusion. <laughs> you know, because that's where, that's where it's got to go, in my opinion. Thank uh, you. I had, I had two more questions, guys. Is it okay? Uh, let me check. Thomas, did you have a quick question you wanted to get in? Because... Right now, you're the only two people that have uh, hands up, so it might just be you two. You can we have more time for you to get your questions at all. So, uh, Thomas, did you have a, a quick question? Um, no, I just I just wanted to add one to the commentary, so I don't have any questions. Oh, okay, right on. Uh, what's your other question, Roz? My second question was: um, with the election of Donald Trump, do you think that there's a divide between the way younger white racists wish to practice racism in a more overt fashion? Versus the older white white racists um, that wish might wish to practice it in a more refined way. In the U.S. or U.K. or do you mean in general? Uh, I would say both U.S. and U.K. Mm. Because I'm and finding that in the U.S. you're finding more. I'm finding more younger white people are being extremely overt um, compared to the older ones that I'm seeing. Um, there are there are older ones that are overt too, but I'm seeing that there's a higher demographic of younger white people that are more overt versus the older ones that wish to be more refined. That's what I see over here. Thank you. Um, I'm not in the U.S., but I, I would actually think that the younger white children want the um, they want the the good racism of the sixties and the 50s, which their grandfathers and their grandmothers um, had the honour to particip participate in. Um, the old, the, the ones who are still alive just want the 50s and 60s back again. That's what I would assume anyway, but well, you're actually seeing it yourself. Over here, well, um, I've not seen anything change, really, regarding um, white people's behaviour due to Donald Trump um, being elected. But regarding the US, I will I, I actually, and what I have seen on YouTube and um, other social media platforms is um, it's the white people who want the old um, 60s and um, 70s and 50s um, racism, white supremacy practice. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's um, 
it's very different in the UK because we don't have the numbers. We don't have the same like percentage of, of um, the numbers of black people here like you have in the US. And so, you know, I agree with just kind of going back to what you were talking about before, the whole power sharing thing. I think the UK is just as, um, has just as much power as the US, but they don't have to, um, they don't have to be as aggressive about, you know, how they practice racism because they don't have the numbers over here because it's already dominant. You know, we, we're such a small number, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of black people over here just, you know, just tend to sort of chug along with it and um, keep their head down or whatever and get on with it because it's, we're such a small number. So we feel probably maybe feel more powerless over here because there is so few of us. Whereas in the US, you know, they, they, there's a need, they feel the need to kind of assert that power a lot more because there's a lot more black people, there's a lot more people trying to fight against it. You know, there's a, they've got a lot more black people to kind of, to work, you know, to kind of kick back against. So, yeah, I, I think it's, it's important to bear that in mind because it can, you know, it can easily be, easily be, you know, on the surface look like, well, you know, the US is, is more, they're the world lead, you know, they kind of lead the way in racism. But I agree as well. Like, I think that the UK is just as, is just, you know, is being just as powerful in that sense because they're the ones that kind of, you know, went around and, you know, did a lot of the colonial stuff and all of that. And, um, so I think it's important to, to keep that in mind that we don't have the numbers. So they, I think they practice it just as just as strongly, just as aggressively, but it's done in a more a more subtle way. Um, and to answer your question about the um, you know about the youth, I think we, again because of the numbers and stuff here, they don't have to practice it any other way than they already practice it because it's already embedded in our in our structure. And because again we the numbers are low, they don't need to practice it any differently. They might feel a little bit more emboldened in terms of you know, because of the Brexit thing, because, you know, the, the, there was a rise in um, racist abuse and stuff like that after the Brexit thing. And then obviously with Donald Trump now, they might think that they can, you know, do a bit more with it or feel a lot more, feel a bit more powerful. Um, but they don't, they don't need to, to be any more aggressive because the system, you know, is set up and is being practiced already at a level that's maintaining itself because, the, again, the numbers are, of black people over here or non, non-white people over here is so much smaller. So that's, you know, that's, it's important to, I just think it's important to keep that in mind when we're thinking about the comparisons between the US and and the UK. So that, that was kind of my point on that. I, I would agree with Jim. It's incredibly subtle over here. So subtle that someone could do something to you and you won't, the penny won't drop until maybe a year later that that person was being racist towards you. They've very much got it down pat um i think they're they're a bit more scared because um other types of people are coming into the country other than black people mainly the eastern europeans um who you would think that they would be glad are coming because they look the same as them but they even have racial bias against those type of people but yeah largely i would agree with june um that the racism is, is is locked here and a lot of black people just are just walking with their heads in the clouds where things are concerned they're in a, a great deal of denial about it so they don't really need to change much Thomas did you want to get your uh, comment in and then we can get Ross's uh, final question in yes sir um, good evening Gus good evening Ross um, Andrew, Lorraine, Mary, Mr. Fox, um, just wanted to say, um, you're right, race trumps gender, <laughs> race trumps money, race trumps everything, and I'm not saying that as a pun, I mean, um, that white lady that, um, the lady spoke about was being very accurate, um, yeah, I saw the picture, Gus, of Trump and Obama, and, uh, I thought it was ironic that the positioning because I think that everything they do is um, pre-conscribed. You know, these are these are a bunch of Freemasons. So um, Trump's in front of the MLK statue, and on the wall behind him is a picture of the Statue of Liberty, which is manifest destiny. And uh, Obama, he's in front of the Statue of Lincoln, the one who freed the slaves. And then behind him, it looks like it could be a plantation and a portrait. 
And in the middle is uh, slave master George Washington looking directly at Trump with this look of approval, you know, and Obama's face is like, man, why am I here? And Trump looks like, man, you better shake my hand, nigga. It just is a very uh, interesting picture. And as you said, it should be picture of the year. Um, I think that um, the uprising racial incidents I've seen since Trump is sort of like the Brexit. However, these are these have been worldwide. Like I've seen um, in all all over um, the the European countries where um, they've had Trump rallies, and it doesn't seem like they're they're against him at all. Um, and um, I think that their position in with Russia. Uh, someone brought that up. Uh, Russia's been um, complaining about their decrease in population, their white population, and um, they've even had concerts with boys to men and everyone over there to try to promote having sex and making more babies. Um, Western Europe, with their influx of non-whites, as well as their non-whites and whites mixing over there, in the U.S., where the white population isn't so much declining, it's just that it's a whole bunch of non-whites coming into the country. Um, so I think that this movement, I see it in France right now, which they call the, the white the right party with this lady that they call the female Trump. Um, Trump. Um, I see the Brexit. I see it in Belgium. I see it in the Netherlands. So I think that they're all calling these white movements, but it seems like they, they're really just a white movement. You know, they're moving in that direction. And um, what you guys were just talking about, I think they all split power. Um, they split power so that they have white total domination. Um, just like you have white people out in the streets crying behind uh, Hillary losing, which is such, to me, it's just the biggest thing ever because I think she's a way bigger racist than Trump. But um, if the way they have people in the streets with, with Hillary is just deception to me. And that's the same way that these these white countries play with words and act like they have little little discrepancies and things. It's all deception. And I think we're about to see them all come together. Um, you know, the big the big thing they have to deal with is Asia. Um, those people are very powerful and they, they outnumber them severely. And um I think that's what we're seeing. Um and uh, I'll mute my line, thank you. Uh, let's see, June, did you want to talk about your project for uh, ways that black people can promote self-care uh, in this time of high stress and terrorism? And then we'll get uh, Ross's third question. Uh, did you want to go ahead and share that, June? Yeah, thank you, um, Gus. Yeah, I just, um, with all this business with Trump and everything, and obviously with all the um, killings and everything that have, that have gone on, and it's been a very highly stressful time for um, for black people, for you know non non white people, and for me it was about trying to think about uh, solutions and live you know living in the solution. And you know what I've um, been working on is to find some ways to show people how to actually start taking care of their own um, black mental health from home. And um, it's so important because if you think about it. In this context, I mean, everybody understands that um, if people are in a, uh, um, a domestic abuse one on one situation, you know, the victim, you, you can sympathize with the victim. You know, the victim is going to need time to heal and has to process what's happened to that person in order to move forward in their life. But for some reason, you know, and because of the I think because of the enormity of what we're going through at the moment, black people, you know, we're not always given the opportunity to actually work through our pain and our stress. So then what happens is we end up... Sorry about that. Got disconnected. Uh, and, of course, everybody was on my line, so everybody got uh, dropped. Uh, that could be interference uh, because I did not lose my Internet signal, but we're just going to reconnect everyone, hang tight, uh, see if we can add everyone back to the line. Thought we were going to exactly. safely get through the program with no issues. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I don't think the White House takes it. I don't think they just put anyone in, you know, after Obama. I think that at any point in time in history, if somebody came out talking with Trump's talk, that he would definitely win the white vote and become the president. I think that, um, 
you know, they, the White House has always had the butler, you know, the black people working there. I mean, that Obama served no other purpose. I mean, he had no power. Uh, I think that it would have happened if anyone came out, if, if Jeb Bush came out talking about he was building a wall and white, white women are getting raped by Mexicans and, you know, he's kicking out the Muslims, he would have won the same way. Hmm. Pat Buchanan tried that in the 90s, and he lost to Bill Clinton. They had some articles talking, doing a comparison contrast between those two. Uh, June should be back with us, I believe. I'm so sorry that we had technical issues and everyone got disconnected. I got disconnected, and uh, it disrupted your promo. So if you want to restart, you were talking about the importance of black self-care and doing things that just things that we can do for ourselves to encourage, promote black mental health. Yeah, I, I think this is this is a really, really important topic because I think it's so easy for us to get stuck in, you know, what Donald Trump is doing or what other white supremacists are doing, and then we end up losing what we need to be doing for ourselves, which actually causes more stress for us. I think it's important for us to really take a step back and to think about the things that we can do in our own daily lives that's going to help promote our own mental health. And, one, and if, when we do that, it means that we're going to be better equipped to deal with uh, white supremacy in a more constructive way. I mean, some of the really, really simple things that I do is, I think, you know, black rage is a, is a massive issue. Obviously, if you're in a situation um, like we all are, we, we, we're in an abusive situation and it's happening day in, day out. And it's, you know, as, as uh, Lily Fuller talks about, we, it's in all nine areas of people activity. So therefore, we need to accept the enormity of this thing and process our our anger in a more constructive way i mean you know just simple things like doing exercise just focusing on what's what's happening to us and using exercise you can use journaling you can do breathing exercises um there are loads and loads of things that you can do to help kind of reduce that stress so that we can actually think more constructively and move forward i have written um a really simple ebook um, about it um, and you can actually get it if you go to juneallen.net that's june like the month and then allen is dot net, um, and go to the, the start here page there's um there's an ebook which goes into a lot more detail about how to understand your emotions how to manage your emotions and it, there's lots of tools and stuff about specific things you can do to release anger to to um understand how it manifests in the body how it manifests psychologically um it gives you also tools for self-compassion calming exercises just things that you can do that are going to help you manage it on a daily basis and take care of yourself and you can use the techniques with your family um i think one of the one of the main areas that i would leave with you as well that i encourage people to do is actually find to speak to somebody else to find somebody in your circle who you trust not every black person can or wants to talk about this stuff because it is painful and it is hard. But if you can find somebody that really wants to heal or wants to work through this stuff, not to complain or moan about white people, but to think about common solutions to do the work together so you can speak to each other. If you And if you have to go to a work situation um, or you have to deal with family members that are in denial about this sort of thing, you can speak to each other. And, and communicate with each other regularly so that you can um, diffuse those triggers before they so they don't they don't actually manifest in a destructive way. So if there's one thing that I can leave with you today is to, is to do that. Find some one person that you trust and that you're close to that wants to do this work in a constructive way, not to not to moan and whine and complain. It's about doing something constructive because once you have that person, it's going to help you. Um, be more constructive about how you're going to how you're going to deal with racism in your own personal life and within your family. So if you want to download the ebook, I'll just give you the address again really quickly. So it's June Allen, and Allen is a l e n dot net. And if you go to the Start Here page, you'll find it in under there. You just put your email address, and then you'll, you'll get that sent to you. And yeah, to find a buddy. That's what I would advise people to find a buddy and just be conscious to take care of your mental health because that is what is that's that's the most radical thing that you can do is to start taking care of yourself because if you're healthy, you're going to be much better equipped to be able to fight what, uh, white supremacy. You can't do it if you're unwell or if you're scared or, yeah. So I would just encourage everyone to do that. Thanks, Gus. Thank you. Great job, Black Mental Health and 
applying counter-racist information, the website JuneAllen.net. It is linked on the Facebook page, and I am tweeting it as I speak. Bang, just posted. Uh, Roz, did you want to get your third and final question in uh, before we get ready to wrap up? We have about five minutes left to get your question and a response. Sure, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to know if any of you have heard about the upcoming lawsuit with Donald Trump supposed to happen, I believe, shortly after he's inaugurated in regards to him um, being involved with a billionaire pedophile, um, uh, convicted pedophile, Jerry Epstein, um, in regards to uh, Donald Trump's rape of a 14-year-old who also witnessed him rape a 12-year-old. Um, also, the fact that both Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton were also um, people who were involved in dealing with his island and also raping young girls as well. And I wanted to know if you've heard of that and if, if you're hearing about it overseas where you guys are. Thank you. Wow, not heard any of that. Wow, that's very serious. Is, do you have any sources that we can go and have a look at that? Um, the Daily Beast has an article. It's entitled The Man Who Could Bring Down Both Clinton and Trump. And they have a picture of Donald Trump, Jerry Epstein in the middle, Jeffrey Epstein in the middle, and uh, Donald Trump to his left. And it'll be your right in the image. And it's, essentially, they're explaining their direct connection to him, the fact that he's a convicted pedophile billionaire with his own island in the Virgin Islands. And that's where some of the rapes have taken place. He's also known to have parties in the New York City area with uh, young children as well that he sets up to be raped by other rich people and politicians. And from what I understand, he's also deeply in bed with Mossad and that um, the sexual activity of these politicians he also has recorded. He has not brought out the recordings, but um, his connection to Mossad, they recorded this stuff so that I guess he can use if anyone gets out of line in regards to how uh, they speak about him publicly. Standard operating procedure, pedophilia. That is standard operating procedure in white culture. No surprise. Uh, that article, you can check it out. Uh, the only thing I would note is uh, that article is from June of this year. Uh, I would say he's a little late for the bringing down. Uh, would have probably been a better idea if he was going to stop Trump before the election. But I'll post it on the Facebook page so that folks can uh, check it out. I'll send you a couple other ones that I, um, that I have in regards to it, too, that I've seen as well. Sure. I didn't see where this was going to go to trial, though. Where, where's that at? Um, because he's supposed to go to trial. It's supposed to be shortly after he's inaugurated. Um, in regards to that, and as well as um, corruption, financial corruption, that has to do with his dealings on Wall Street. And both of those trials are taking place at the same time. The, the female involved is an adult now, but it was in the mid '90s that she was 14 when, he, when she said that he um, beat her up and he, he raped her and that she actually witnessed him rape a 12-year-old at, at Jerry Epstein's property there. Um, and like I said, there's also information regarding Bill Clinton perusing his island as well as Hillary Clinton perusing his island. And from what I understand, they also uh, raped the young women while they were there too. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely dig up some more articles and send them to you. At least from the, the quick view that I had, these are not criminal suits. Uh, I think these are civil suits. So probably be looking at something, uh, a financial settlement, something akin to, uh, if that, uh, some probably be looking at something akin to what happened with his universities, the Trump universities. I think they just settled that suit for several million dollars uh, over the weekend. That could happen. Whites have a lot. I mean, whites, as has been stated, whites are very very familiar with dealing with allegations of sexual misconduct and making those things vanish. That's not going to stop the white supremacy juggernaut. Uh, You're correct, too, um, in regards to it being a civil suit. And a lot of people are outraged that it was not a criminal suit. But again, I, like you said, they're insulated and protected. And that's why they were both even allowed to run for the presidency in the first place. Anybody else last comment they needed to make sure they get in before we wrap up? We pretty much did our 90 minutes. Yeah, my, my last thing is, what, is the girl black or white? White. Oh, okay. 
Right on. Yeah, um, sorry, I've got two. One um, regarding Vanessa. That is a cowbell, Gus. Um, two, I'm doing a video regarding black parents informing their children about racism, white supremacy, compare, and comparing it to when white children get told how to practice racism. Um, I remember one broadcast you done years ago. I can't remember who it was with, but the white man was saying how he took his young white child to the park to look at the other black children and then make comparisons. Do you remember? Do you remember that broadcast, Gus? Oh yeah, this was Who's in two thousand. I think this is 2013. This was the summer Mr. King from uh, Caucasian Persuasion. Uh, He was on the program the summer of 2013. I remember it because it was right at the time of the Trayvon Martin murder trial. Uh, I think we did spend some time talking about, but he talked about, uh, he's probably a big fan of like Richard Spencer, Richard Spence and all these whites that have been like with the alt-right uh, and Trump supporters and what have you, same type outfit. But he talked about that, taking his white children at like six to the playground and looking at the differences between the black children and the white children and talking about what's expected of them. Right, that was it. Um, and do you remember any other previous white guests who um, who have said other things like that and have been taught at an early age? Because I remember Timothy Parrish, he, um, he gave... Um, testimonies but i can't remember any others i'm sure there have been many others uh, in terms of whites who just you know said and did racist things and talked about uh how that impact like at a from childhood they were saying doing racist things or hearing how they're supposed to how they're supposed to function as a white person i know there was a white person a white man he was on the program in the this is like towards the end of 2013 i believe uh he wrote the book uh the color of christ and he talked about growing up and how it was just so common telling racist jokes about black people and he grew up they they were not around a lot of black people and so this was just a real common thing and ha ha nigga this nigga that blah 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 like it's been quite a few i'd have to probably take some time to just kind of reflect but he's one that i can think of uh off top he wrote the book the color of uh co-authored the book the color of christ um, I'm sure we've had some others. I would just have to think a little bit uh, about some of the anecdotes that they've shared. So that was the end of 2013, that last one? Uh, the Color of Christ, I believe so. Either the end of 2013. I'll double check before we go off air just to uh, make sure I'm not botching my dates here. But yeah, all right. Thank you very much for that. Well, white people have always included their children. When you think about the images of the lynches, there were children there. Do you know what I mean? So they've always been aware. They've always been, you know, very well clued up. It's us that's not doing our part with our children. Correct. Uh, That was at the end of 2012 uh, when we had uh, the author uh, Edward... Bloom uh, on the program end of 2012 and he gave some of those anecdotes it might even be good uh, Patrick Phillips uh, he was on the program last month and we talked about his book blood at the root about the racial yeah, cleansing yeah I've got that segment oh okay okay yeah, yeah I've got that segment Edward Bloom is it B-L-O-O-M B-L-U-M Edward Bloom B-L-U-M thank you very much the episode is called On White Jesus. The Cows On White Jesus. Okay. On White Jesus. I think it's right at the beginning. of. I think it's right in the definition because he agrees with my definition of white supremacy and then he goes into his white childhood. Thank you very much. And that was 2012? Yes, sir. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh... Other folks have any final comment? Our UK callers, uh, June, Lorraine, Mary, uh, we just heard Mr. Fi, Andrew, anything else you all need to get in before we wrap up? Yeah, yeah just, can I be heard? Yes, sir. Yeah, just to say that um, 
you know, the whole thing about perpetuating this system of white supremacy, um, it, me it, it, you know, it, it then means enculturalization of white children, you know. So the whole thing about showing white children lynchings, getting them okay with that, you know, you know, I mean, you know, what they used to do in fox, fox hunting, you know, they used to get a bit of blood and put on white children's foreheads, getting eaten a bit of fox and whatever they used to do, you know. So, so this whole thing about training white children, um, you know, <clears throat> definitely white women. Uh, and that's why a lot of white women voted for Trump, you know, because they understand that they get it. And, and so, you know, so, so that's quite important. The whole thing about training white children to perpetuate the system, right, is, 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 is central, you know, to, to, to white supremacy. So. And women are more guilty than the men in regards to training the children, you know, for the school system, you know, at home. So women, <laughs> they're the ones, if anything, that you need to watch out for the most. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to, to wrap up by saying, you know, don't be, um, be fooled by, into thinking that you don't have any power just because we see all this happening with Donald Trump and everything. You know, we have a lot more power than we think we do. We just need to use it appropriately. Just start taking care of yourself and then everything else will follow suit. You know, just, yeah, don't, don't you know, deny how much power you think you have because we have a lot more power than we think we have. Just have to use it. Um, I would just like to say I think the whole world needs to buckle up because we're going to have a very, few, a very interesting few years ahead of us and a lot of us will probably have very tough decisions to make but they will be necessary in order to secure our survival. For sure, for sure. Uh, that is our 90. Uh, we, I thought we would, that the third Sunday in December was going to be on December 25th, but it's the week before. So Global Sunday Talk for next month, the last one of this year, will be on December 18th uh, as we get ready for the big day uh, next month. But we'll be good to uh, kind of wrap up, make an assessment of the year, how we think things will proceed moving forward into 2017. Uh, but we'll look forward from hearing uh, from everyone uh, in about 30 days time. I hope everyone stays uh, safe, stays productive. Uh, great hearing about June's project and uh, Lorraine had shared some of her artwork. Uh, really impressive uh, artistic skills. Uh, just whatever uh, talent, whatever black genius you have, apply it uh, and try to find as many different ways this, that you can apply it as possible. I think that's one of the things about the system of white supremacy racists are very very good uh, at having us uh, discouraged uh, with a low level of ambition uh, and just to a point where we've kind of uh, or just resigned to being abused and terrorized uh, like really make an effort as June said uh, to be focused be active uh, and looking for ways that you can work against this problem this problem can be solved uh, racists just don't want us to think this way. They want us to think that this is permanent. This is going to be here forever. And the best we can do is just shut up, take it, and, you know, maybe find us a good white person to sit next to. Not at all. We can solve this problem. We'll solve this problem. We just need to be serious about the way we use our time and energy. Uh, and that we do have enemies. We do have a problem that needs addressing. Uh, with that, we should be here on Tuesday. Uh, Dr. Athena Matua, uh, Dr. Curry has referenced her work regularly. Uh, she uh, has done work kind of exploding that mythology of black male privilege, uh, talking about when you look for evidence, you will have a difficult time finding it. Uh, but she should be here this coming Tuesday. Uh, we'll have two programs, as already stated, this coming Thursday. Paul Ifaomi Grant will be here in the morning, early broadcast, well, depending on where you are, earlier in the day, this coming Thursday, and then it's still Thursday, that means we will still be doing workplace racism uh, this coming Thursday, normal time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Friday, we will have uh, Lothrop Stoddard, the rising tide of color against white world supremacy, ses uh, session five. Uh, we're closing in on the end of the book. I hope it's been constructive. And then the compensatory call-in coming up next Saturday. Active as we uh, close out November. If you need information, if you can't find a program in the archives, if you have a guest suggestion, uh, if you just, you know, something is not clear, something didn't make sense on the program, drop an email, untiljustice at gmail.com, untiljustice at gmail.com. 
dot com. If we have listeners, this is, you know, pretty solid. We have listeners worldwide. If you're in the UK area and same thing, if you want to try and have contact, reach out to people that listen to the cows or just want to share information about racism, I will forward. Uh, if you want to try, I know we had some people that were in the UK that were looking for cows listeners in their area. So if you would be interested in doing like an email exchange and maybe you all can talk on the phone or what have you, just let me know, drop an email and put in the subject where you are. So if you're in the UK and you're looking for people, just put, you know, UK listeners or or UK contacts or UK contact, wherever you happen to be. And I will forward. Uh, I think that's one of the great things that we can do, looking for ways that we can work together constructively with other non-white people and already have listeners chiming in. Some of our folks with us right now saying they would be happy to connect. So just drop me an email until justice at gmail.com. Put your geographic location in the subject And I will forward trying as best I can to connect people. Uh, With that, thank you so much to everybody for participating. Roz, Thomas, June, Mary, Lorraine, Mr. Fox, uh, Andrew. Thanks, everyone, for uh, participating. It was great hearing your views. And uh, we will do it again soon. Stay safe uh, and have a productive week. Uh, I will state again, sobriety would be best under conditions of white supremacy. Uh, We have a massive problem confronting us i don't think a new port or a new beer or cannabis or any other narcotics i don't think that is going to help tune our brain computer to optimal functioning so that we can solve the problem racist man racist woman racist child war is being waged against the black people 24 7 we should make sure that our behavior reflects that at all times particularly if you're going to be behind the wheel uh, or just in a vehicle, period, regardless. If you're a driver, passenger, even if you're a pedestrian, you do not want to have that be the time that you're under the influence and then get stopped by Darren Wilson, Daniel Holtzclaw, any of these other race soldiers, badge or no. Whites are dangerous. War is being waged against us. And we should be functioning seriously to solve this problem. I don't think alcohol, tobacco, any other drugs are going to help us to do that. That being said, creator, we ask that you help us remain patient with other black people, victims of white supremacy. We ask that you help us remain patient with ourselves. Remind us to demonstrate the highest levels of black self-respect at all times, in all places, each and every time we are in contact with another black person. It has been time replace white supremacy with justice immediately context of white supremacy signing out thanks all for tuning in nigga you so brainwashed i'm a victim What's brother your problem? you're a victim i'm a victim of 400 years of conditioning shut up the man has programmed my conditioning mm-hmm. even my conditioning has been conditioned <laughs>